from across the globe. From the center of aerospace. And now to you. Thank you for downloading the Aero Society podcast from the Royal Aeronautical Society. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, great to see so many of you. I think we have almost 200 people, so uh, thank you very much for coming this evening. My name's uh, Jonathan Council. I'm president of the Heathrow branch of the Society. Uh, and in my day job, I'm Group Head of Sustainability at International Airlines Group. Um, before I introduce our speaker and the presentation tonight, just got a few uh, housekeeping points. So there's no planned fire alarm test this evening. So in the event of a fire alarm activation, uh, please use the emergency exit. Essentially, it's this side. So if you either go this way or that way, and then out onto the grass, don't go into the building. So basically, follow any of us that will be heading that way anyway. Um, uh, the other point, BA is a, uh, Waterside is a secure building, so if you're attending from outside, please don't wander around unescorted if you can stay in this area. Um, there's no smoking throughout the building, and uh, mobile phones should either be switched off or switched to silent mode. Uh, so that's the, uh, the housekeeping pieces, um, and today the speaker, our guest speaker, he'll speak for approximately just over an hour, about an hour and a quarter. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, detailed information he'd like to share with you, and clearly it's a, a popular topic. But there will be uh, an opportunity for a question and answer uh, uh, after that. And to sure, ensure everyone can hear the question loud, we have some um, rolling mics. And can we ask, if you want to ask a question, could you state your name or your professional affiliation before asking uh, your question? So let me uh, introduce our speaker. So it's great pleasure to welcome our guest speaker. It's uh, Linus Benjamin Bauer, who is a senior aviation consultant working for a German consulting firm. Uh, Linus has six years' experience in the aviation industry. He's worked for several airlines, including uh, Skywork Airlines, Etihad Airways, and Singapore Airlines. Um, in 2019, graduated with a Master of Science degree in air transport management from City University, and indeed was honored with an uh, Outstanding Academic Achievement Award, personally by um, His Royal Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saad Al Maktoum, I think, uh, which uh, yeah, is a, a great accolade, who's chairman and CEO of Emirates, for those that didn't know. Uh, and currently you are, as I say, working as a senior uh, aviation consultant, but you're doing a PhD, uh, a PhD degree in all transport management, and also since 2019 you've been a visiting lecturer at air transport management at City University of London. So, uh, so great, uh, great track record. So, and then on tonight's topic, which is, um, it's a very hot topic, obviously, in, uh, in our sector, um, commercial availability of ultra long haul operations. And it's based on some research that Linus has undertaken, conducted in, uh, when he undertook his MSc uh, by utilizing evidence collected from uh, Qantas, the Qantas' ultra long haul Boeing 787, which I think has been going now for about nine months. So it'll be interesting to hear how that is going. Um, uh, and it's worth mentioning that this is the first presentation of Linus's world tour. So in fact, it's his premiere. This is opening night, so uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. For, uh, and I believe your, your world tour includes uh, Dubai, Perth, Sydney, Singapore, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. So we're great to be the first on that, uh, that tour. And then just a um, just final point from me. I mean, I've got two points of real personal interest with this subject. First is to do with my day job uh, around sustainability. So I'm very interested to hear you know, if there are any environmental benefits from these ultra long haul flights. I mean, it, it feels that because there's less landing and takeoffs, that intuitively there should be benefit because you've got less of those uh, high fuel burn parts. But of course, the, down, the, the negative side of it is you have to carry more fuel to get to that distance. So I'm interested to hear about uh, how that trade-off works out. And, um, and also, I'm a dual citizen of New Zealand, so that anything that can reduce the pain of getting to New Zealand will be uh, uh, very welcome. So, so again, interested from that perspective. So enough from me, so let me hand over, please, over to you, Linus. Thank you very much. Uh, May I come to the case lecture about the commercial viability of ultra long haul operations. Uh, it is the great pleasure for me to be here today 
presenting the first academic epidemics about the viability of Altolon Uh Before I start with the lecture, I ask for some STPTs from your side. Uh, the first question is, hey, anyone of you ever been on, on the Altolon Kohl flight about more than 15 and a half hours? If yes, please raise your hand. Few people. <coughs> Neckman, have you ever been on Qantas Dimash flight between Perk and London? Is applied to the people who raised the hand before. Two people. Okay. So the Neckman, from your point of view, are the Alta Long Coal flies in Sagahe commercially viable? or economical feasible. If you think yes, please raise your hand. Okay. No. <laughs> 50 50. Okay, thank you. We start with the introduction. Before I introduce myself, I have the very important information. Uh, I have the hearing disability. I was born deaf, and I was able to make my hearing at the age of 13. So there might be the moment you can't follow me. So the solution is uh, all the important information have been added to the most lies so you are able to follow me. If you have uh, specific uh, questions, you can email me or we can do the face-to-face -face, uh, talk afterwards. Now I introduce myself. Actually, he introduced me before already. Thank you for this. Uh, I have been working for six years in the aviation industry. I have a very strong commercial background and uh, involved marketing, international sales, management trainee program, revenue management and pricing. Yes. So I would like to, before I go to the market analysis and all other topics, I would like to tell you a bit more about my master's process. Uh, the background is uh, I did my master's thesis at the City University of London. And the topic was the commercial availability of ultra long coal flies, evidence from the Perth London market. Process supervisor is most Mr. Paul Clark, who is also present here. Can you raise your hand, please? Yes, thank you. Um, it was the master's process from September to March. I spent my time in many places in London, Sydney, Perth, and Dubai. The high class, uh, I have been flow a lot of flies, different routings from Germany uh, or the UK to Australia to collect a lot of data from different airlines. And uh, I also had a very good time in Australia. Like you can see on the pictures, uh, I had an interview with the Shechnek expert, Mrs. Uh, Professor Stephen Simpson, who was hired by Qantas to do the research on the set neck abyss on ultra long coal flies. How can you impress people to fly 17, 18, 19, or 20 hours in the future? And uh, the most memorable high life was uh, to visit the first international airport in Sydney, in Moose Bay. Uh, the first plane for Southampton took off in 1938, and the most flying boat the flying boat spent 10 days to fly from Sydney to Southampton, a journey with 30 stops, and 20 stops out of 30 stops was just to get full. It's amazing. Uh, the main objective of the research process was development of the revenue cost model by collecting uh, data to the analysis as foundation for the model and the setup. Why? I want to produce academic evidence with the Murphy-Lucas model to find out if uh, 
and the main aim was to fill the cup in the academic literature, and I would like to improve the debate on uh, the viability of curing and fusion ultralong growth flies. And the revenue cost model provides also a tool for the consulting process, for example, for the who simulation and analysis. And the revenue cost model has been used by LL and Quantas Messengi. All the data and the information I am presenting to you has been collected from different sources, including aircraft manufacturers, engine manufacturers, uh, data providers like OSC, IATA, and CAPA. And if you are more interested to learn about the methodology of the revenue cross model, uh, please approach to me personally afterwards. Now we start with a market analysis because I would like to show you the whole picture uh, in what kind of market environment is Quantas operating. It gives you the better understanding what are the market conditions to operate ultra long coal flies in Shanghai. We start first with the question, why do airlines offer ultra long coal flies? The main point is, Ultra long haul operators are positioning themselves in the premium market because the ultra long haul fly is a premium product by offering high pairs. The price is critical when the customer shoes are like. However, the product ultimately sell on value rather than price alone because more than 30% of the customers in 2018 did not choose the cheapest fly offer on Skyscanner. The customer's substantive body is also to some degree product sensitive, and therefore, customer must perceive value. The fundamental objective for the airline, like Qantas, is to pitch a better bid for the customer's business than the competitors are pitching by offering perceptly more customer value to target customer segments. If you are looking at the curve, the products of the airline on the right side of the curve are only sustainable in the long term. If there are entry barriers preventing competition from other carriers willing to position on the left side of the curve, or if the segment is insufficiently profitable to address such customer-driven competition. In this case, Quantas offer proof value relative to the competitors when they provide unique benefits which justify premium pricing for the premium products. This is the non-stop service between Perth and London including the products on Crown and on board, for example, the transit laws in Perth with the spa facility. By, by deciding the service price offer, there is believed to sit somewhere on that segment with an acceptable perceived value curve, Quantas can target specific customer segments. We move on to the kangaroo route. The kangaroo route is one of the heavily competitive uh, route or corridor around the world. A lot of airlines are competing for traffic through their points, including emerging hubs across Asia and the Middle East. If you are looking at the picture, the most hubs are based in Asia, and two hubs are based in the Middle East from the Mika hubs. The Dimes link from Perth to Langu bypass 12 of the world's 20 business hub by seas offer. The majority of them are also main hubs of Ally, Star Ally, Sky Team, and Mangma. Out of the 12 world's business hub airports by seas in the area between Australia and the UK, six airports belong to the top 13 hubs. With the higher share of connecting potential between both countries, in this case, Australia and UK, 
Dubai, Ebiwe, Singapore, Bangkok, Star Alai, Kwangsu, Sanga Sautang, it must form a alliance member, but they left the alliance. Kuala Lumpur and Hong Kong are the Mongol hubs. If you are looking at Singapore, Bangkok, and Hong Kong alone, our three Asian triangle points with a population pool of 45 million people. That is one of the main reasons why Kwangta shift the A380 operation from Dubai back to Singapore to focus on the Asian market. Singapore and Dubai are significant hubs for the traffic between Europe and Australia. We are talking about Emirates and Singapore Airlines. If you are looking back in the last 10 years, the Gulf carriers have leveraged their privileged geographical location and to obtain a competitive advantage on the UK Australia market, support by the efficient hub and spoke system. One example is they have the 24 hours operation at the airport compared to the most airports in Europe, which makes it impossible to be more efficient. Now I show you all the key players between uh, Perk and London, or the main competition of Kumantas, uh, direct fly. For the one person of the potential journey between Perk and London, between April and September 2018, where via Abu Dhabi, Etihad, Dubai Emirates, and Doha, Qatar Airways. 26% of the passengers flew via the following hub, Singapore, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, and Hong Kong. Etihad was the airline which withdrew the service to Perth in October 2018 as part of the continuing review of the national performance after coping with the news loss. Now is a market share. If you are compared the market share between uh, 2017 and 2018, the same period, 178, 560,000 potentials in total flew between Perth and London. It is uh, the rise of 2% more. The diamond link of Qantas immediately captured a significant market share of 24% in terms of potential flow. The market share of the competitions decreased. The premium carrier Singapore Airlines was mainly affected by this, in this case, minus 7%. Because Heathrow Perth belonged to Singapore Airlines top five congesting airport pairs since 2016-2017. Despite being located in one of MUA's key markets, Australia, the existing Emirates Qantas partnership until 2023 contributes to Emirates' large share in the London Perth market because of the cooperation with Qantas and it gives them the possibility to get potential via Dubai and bring the potential on their own metal to Perth. In 2018, Emirates' decline in market share was also driven by Qantas' strategy move from Dubai back to Singapore. Conclusion. The success of Qantas on the Perth London route led to competitions move to reduce frequencies and capacities to Perth. For example, Emirates and Singapore Airlines reduced the amount of daily operation and Malaysian Airlines downgrade the aircraft from 330 to 737. If you are looking at the premium market share, which means uh, business class first, and you can see also there's the plus six uh, increase compared to 2017, which was driven by the loss of the diamond fly from Perth to London. As mentioned in the previous slide, the premium carrier Singapore Airlines must also make this address in the premium segment. Conclusion is the Diamond Fly was a success in terms of obtaining market shares. If you are looking at the feed of traffic, because the Diamond Fly from Perth to London is not only the point to point market, it is also a market which is driven by congesting at the Perth end. If you are looking at the numbers, 
the majority of potential are traveling from the east coast of Australia, mainly Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. But Melbourne is the very special case. The plane start in Melbourne, stop in Perth, and fly to London. That's why Melbourne has the very large share of congesting potential. And the main focus lies on providing the feeder network in Perth because that is the competitive advantage. Because Commanders has 14 destinations served from Perth, and Emirates only served to the major cities in Australia. And if you are looking at the numbers outbound, the mean low is almost 90%, and inbound, uh, from Perth to London was 91%. That is the new success after the first year of operation. If you are looking at the other side, compared to Perth, London is the very classic final destination market. The most people are leaving the plane in London because of the large cashman area, because of the large premium market. And that is one of the reasons why uh, Qantas provide not so much congesting transfers from London. They only provide mainly congesting transfer beyond London to the UK and Ireland. And the main transfer points or starting points of the potential are Dublin, Manchester and Glasgow. If you are looking at the Heathrow market, the Heathrow market uh, is the very last Origin destination market. In terms of the total amount of potentials flown between London and Australia in 2018, Heathrow was the largest OAC market. Slightly more than 1.3 million two maze potential travel between London and the cities in Australia. One of the reasons is that 202 of the top UK. 300 companies are headquarters, making a 20 mile radius out of Heathrow. It, it makes it very attractive for the business uh, market as final destination. Uh, in addition to the population of London, the catchment area of Heathrow is also very large. You have over 4.5 million people live, making a 60 mile radius. Now, maybe we are going to the fairs. How is Qantas performing in terms of uh, fares? I have done the fair benchmarking analysis, and on the left, uh, on the right side, you see uh, the development of the fares days before departure from the point of view of revenue management. And uh, Qantas always has been the airline selling the highest fare on Perth and London because that is the only one airline which is operating the direct flight. And that is the so-called monopolistic defamation commanders has. People are willing to pay a high fare for the direct flight, basically. And uh, the demand and the pricing is driven by the high connectivity share between Perth and the east coast of Australia. About 40% of the bookings are made by potential starting their journey from cities such as Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, via Perth to London. The high yield focus on potentials flying from Perth to Heathrow and back is also very important for Qantas to counterbalance the lower yield on congesting traffic. If you are looking at the fair benchmarking out of Heathrow, the visibility of premium pricing is influenced by the competition, customers' perception of value, and economic conditions in both markets. Because of the intense national competition on the kangaroo hoop, the fares for transfer itineraries are usually more competitive than the fares for non-stop flights. In the most case, the airlines, for example, Qantas on London to Perth, increase the price to focus on direct premium traffic between the complex airport and the secondary airport if the demand outstrips the supply. 
last but not least, he draws attractiveness because of the high proportion of premium potentials and long coal rules, I to try the first up. If you are looking at economic class, economic class is the capping which owns the highest capacity share on the 7A79 with 70%. Alta long growth lies from London to Perth in economic class, where average only 58% more expensive than the long stock flies via the Middle East and other points. On a couple of travel times, the fares out of London were up to 98% higher than the cheapest long stop return fare. It's amazing. Uh, in contrast to the fares out of London, the return fares out of Perth fluctuate between 16 to 76%, partly driven by the higher share of collecting traffic at the Perth end. I have provided uh, market analysis to give you an uh, understanding how quanta is performed in this market environment, how is the price look like, how is the share of OND, and now I would like to tell you more about the market opportunity uh, from my analysis. What is stimulating demand for alta non coal traffic demand? The propensity to travel increased dramatically when people enter the middle class in many parts of the world, the growth of global wealth. Two stations are essential for alta long coal air travel demand since the continuing strong customer spending on travel has bolstered air travel in recent years. The MAP expansion of the Business networks globally, the rise of affluent customers and growing numbers of immigrants worldwide with the disposable income because of the globalization have also led to a growth of total premium class bookings worldwide. One example, if you are looking at the Indians working in the Bay Area or Silicon Valley, they have the very high disposable income and the very uh, high commodified shop. And therefore, San Francisco has the very large premium customer base between San Francisco and India, which is also operated by United Airlines now. The premium potentials traveling in first business and premium economic class are also essential for the operators to obtain economically viable yields on alter non rules because they are holding up better than the normal economic class yields. Apart from the increasing air transport deregulation, the hub congestion and economic growth of the nation around the world and around the non-hub secondary hub airports, the rise of the unique city pairs in the alta non coal tester is also driven by the deploy development of the fuel and cost efficient twin engine aircraft such as the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. It makes the direct service or the thinner hoops between main hubs and the contrary hubs or cities commercially viable again. For example, the Boeing 787 aircraft had reduced the cost by 50% on average. If you look at other routes uh, which has been operated by airlines uh, with the A340-300 or A340-500, they may are not commercial viable and they couldn't make profit. But with the 787, they may are profitable again. The cashman area is also very important. A large and attractive cashman area with a large existing premium customer base, which means higher willingness to pay, is a necessary condition for launching an alta non coal service between the main hub and secondary hub. Like mentioned before in the previous slides about the feeder traffic, providing feeder traffic is also very important because it leads to a competitive advantage of the airline on the per London market, for example. The reliability, the on-time performance, and customer punctuality of staff service because it is the premium service. It's also a very important thing to consider 
because it plays a crucial role in the premium segment. The premium pricing for offering high convenience customer in general, for example, the Australians, they have the geographical disadvantage. They are far away from the rest of the world. They have to always travel long haul. And the people from Australia follow taking the connecting flight, for example, from Sydney to Perth and train to London, which means they are connecting in their home country because uh, they do not like to interrupt their journey in the Middle East, in the middle of the night or in the early of the morning, the, because the stress level of the potential uh, is increasing and the shack lag effects will hit harder. The seasonality of the demand is also very important because in Shanghai, the monthly variable costs of operating an ultra long coil route are largely affected by the seasonality of demand, which mainly occur in the leisure market or during the state to tour holidays when leisure traffic usually peaks while business traveler demand shrinks. The price elasticity of demand on ultra long coil by targeting less price elastic uh, and benefits, so premium customer segments may have willingness to pay for the premium fare. Average 30% higher than one stock fare, the ultra long call operator will be able to build a strong premium market position for corporate premium laser and visiting friends and relative travelers. The two-class configuration on the aircraft should be avoided on ultra long call flights. Why? If you are looking at Singapore Airlines, they are struggling to fill the premium economic capping on Singapore legal work. Because the ultra long call flight from Singapore to New York is mainly address business travelers, and the flight is about 19 hours, the more business travelers will not be willing to sit in the premium economy for the 19 hours. They will rather go to fly Singapore, Frankfurt, New York, or from this autumn on, Singapore, Tokyo, New York. So, it should be avoided. From the revenue management and pricing perspective, a three or four class configuration on the aircraft with at least 40% share of premium seats is considered as an optimal configuration for ultra long service because you have the opportunities for upselling, demand stimulation, revenue maximization, or improvement of yield mix. Because if people book the economic class on Qantas, they have still the opportunity to upgrade themselves by cash or by miles. Do you have the upselling opportunities? It gives the people the flexibility to choose their own cabin club and to choose uh, the upgrades or the other options they have. Capping in the young refurbishment or modification on ultra long coal aircraft with new products in order to address the premium market segment and maintain a base of young customers. For example, a new premium economic class product in the future because the premium economic class nowadays generates 2.3 times higher revenues than its production costs because the production cost of the premium economic class is about 1.6 times higher than the economic class, but the premium economy leading to the highest marginal returns of all carbon class. That is why the premium economic class is becoming the increasingly important carbon class for revenue maximization and improvement in customer experience. Value at the product to the small, medium enterprise, laser and bow FR segment, the development of the new cabin between business class and premium economic class on ultra long call flights will be also the another option because the cap between business class and premium economic class is getting larger from time to time because the business class is basically become the new first class because a lot of airlines, they are removing the first class from the aircraft because they have implemented the new business class, so the cap between premium economy and business gets larger. 
The focus on Daimash premium traffic on the Alta Long Cruise Line is also very important because they are mainly focused on the premium traffic between both cities if the demand outstrip supply, like mentioned before with the attractiveness of Heathrow. High net promoter score. The Alta Long Cruise Route nowadays enjoy high net promoter score. For example, the Perth London market is the highest net promoter score in the entire network of Qantas. It leads to a very strong position in the premium segment. The Alta Long Cruise Fly is also somehow environmental friendly because from Perth to London you have nice CO2 emissions. It attracts the growing eco mining customer segment, which means you are taking long time as flight instead of flying two legs with two takeoffs, for example, uh, London, Dubai, and then Dubai to Perth. The increasing importance of VFR traffic for filling the seasonality gaps, strong ethical ties between two countries, for example, UK and Australia, uh, or markets, leads to more stability of demand throughout the year. For example, the population in Perth is very notable of the high proportion of UK and island born residents. The attention of cross share price with other airlines will strengthen the premium market position by offering higher frequencies and more destinations. Alliances have been outdated in these times through a strategy partnership with another airline, for example, showing venture is also becoming increasingly important for airlines. In addition to enjoying the common benefits from a strategic partnership or showing venture activity, a strategic partnership with another alliance member, for example, British Airways and Qantas from 2023 on after the end of the partnership with Emirates, will establish and strengthen the premium kangaroo route, including increase the premium market share of British Airways and Qantas between the UK, Australia and New Zealand via the establishing hub in Perth. Ancillary revenue is becoming also very increasingly important because uh, it is a machine for the cost recovery. For example, the higher proportion of last minute upgrades to the net cabin class on Alta Long Cruise routes pay per cash, miles, or boat. Because a lot of customers they are booking echo first, but uh, less days before departure. They are getting more afraid to sitting in economic class for 17 hours, though they are willing to upgrade. The increasing importance of fragment flyer program, the new LT program of Alliance member airlines, for example, the fragment flyer program of Qantas, can be seen as essential driver of market share and revenue commodity, and having a large existing customer base in the home and for him market, for example, UK and Australia, can be considered as one of the necessary market conditions for alter long growth service. So now we are moving on to the revenue cost model. The revenue cost model must be on the scenario per London to build up the academic evidence if alter long growth flights can be commercially viable and profitable. Uh, I show you the summary of the stucky parameters and the stucky impasse, impulse and the aircraft key assumption. And uh, this can be on you most based on the 7879 operation uh, every day per week and the uh, amount of potentials, uh, most 130,874. And the Northwestern was 82 percent because a lot of airlines in former time they had the Northwestern about 79 percent to 82 percent, but they couldn't operate uh, with profit. The average among my net fare was about 928.75 US dollar, and the aircraft configuration is uh, the configuration Qantas is using on the Perth London service. And the set full price was by US 
2.2 man colon. And take is the result I have from the Mervenu cross analysis. And in conclusion, uh, being April and September 2018, commanders could make profit on that route with the low pressure of 82%. They have achieved a profit margin of 2%, which is very slightly, but you have to keep in mind in the reality, Kwanda says the north by store of 90 and 91 person, so they have achieved a larger margin. And the break even north by store is 79.8. The break even north by store means uh, that is the required north by store to break even on one route. The Mervenu cross model was uh, built by the bottom up approach. Uh, if you are looking at the profit quantas could make from per to London per Padangisa, it's about 19.43 US dollar. And uh, the total operating cost is about 5.28 US cents. We are share of 64%. The fuel is the main cost driver for Qantas non-stop service between Perth and London in terms of variable driver's operating costs. That is the monthly overview of the revenue with the margin of 2%. And that is the performance overview all the data I have uh, collected from the analysis and from the data providers and calculate, for example, the available C kilometers and revenue potential kilometers. And the check fuel price was implemented by the Yata Fuel Monitor. And uh, together with the fishing yield, the golden rule for full surface network areas on long coal and alter non coal hose is to achieve a minimum low pressure between 80 and 85%. It could prove that the sufficient demand for alter non coal surface exists. We are coming to the low pressure performance uh, based on the scenario. The pre even low pressure is the average percentage of seas that must be filled on average like a current average fare for quantas potential revenue to break even with the operating expense on the alter non route. In order to achieve a positive profit margin and average revenue of US dollar 971.30 per potential on the alter non route between Perth and London, the average north of minimum 79.8 or higher will be required for quanta to break even. The key finding from the in-house measures a study conducted by RDC Aviation in 2018 highlights that the break-even revenue per potential in MUS, for instance, is up to 15% lower on the long stop surface between Perth and London. Fire is hard to buy. The result is mainly driven by the compounding cost of flying fuel for an alter long coal distance. The key takeaways from the revenue cost model analysis, Qantas deploy a configuration of 34 seats less in total than the average of all 7879 operators. However, they do offer more business class seats for its premium route. The revenue per seat increase with the increasing stage length. However, revenue per available seat kilometer decrease with each additional kilometre flow. The operating cost increase with the increasing stage length. However, cost per available C kilometre also decrease with each additional kilometre flow because you have the higher productivity of the aircraft and the cabin crew at the angle. If you are looking at the fixed crew cost, the Gulf and the Asian carriers have a cost advantage over quanta by paying lower rates to time. And they have less stress labor laws and weak labor union in their countries. However, when it comes to the wage cost productivity equation, 
the staff may productivity, which means availability kilometer per crew member, is higher on outer long crew hoods. The distribution of costs, airport handling and overhead costs are distributed across more flown kilometers. Fuel costs, say fuel, like mentioned before, is the most significant single expense for outer long crew operators up to as much as one third of the total operating cost and two thirds of the variable domestic operating cost, about 64%. The carriers of extra fuel, one of the fuel costs may lay disadvantage of bypassing a hub airport, for example, Dubai and Singapore, on a damaged route, is that the foregoing of a refuel stop forces the ultra long call operator to carry the set fuel basically for the second leg of the flight from the first takeoff. For example, on Pearl and London, it's about 94.3 tons of fuel they carry. <coughs> fuel saving technique. Qantas invests five years and millions of Australian dollars in the development of fuel saving strategies, thus a single engine taxi and a new flight plane system 40 that makes better use of safe streams and tail means on ultra long coil flights, but they are also using on long coil flights and the cloud computing to crunch the data on thousands of possible flight paths, the usage of millions of data points in order to develop a cost map of the most efficient route quantum surf fly. Ancillary revenue in 2017, Quantas earned. 1.15 billion US dollar from selling ancillary products, which is about 12.1% of the total revenue. And the new LT program, with 11.8 million members, with a share of approximately 90% of the total ancillary revenue, has become a main ancillary revenue stream for commanders nowadays. The fuel for the flies above 8,000 miles could cost as much as up to 30% than the corresponding fuel for basically two times food, 4,000 my legs. However, the takeoff process is very fuel consuming because it leads to the high fuel consumption on two legs. The lower emission cost per London surface has the lower environmental impact than flies, fire points in Southeast Asia or the Gulf even if the A380 aircraft may be in use in concentrated flows. It leads to the lower overall emission cost. The maintenance cost. Qantas modern and young 7879 fleet with the average age of seven months, which was in September 2018, requires fewer of the labor intensive maintenance and overhaul procedure. However, once the fleet age increase, the maintenance and overall cost increase as well. Because there is the age effects on the maintenance cost. The influence of the sister length on the maintenance cost has to be considered as a, another contributing factor. Because of the very high utilization rate of the aircraft, the maintenance cost on ultra long crew flights are not the prime cost driver in cooperation with Sohul. The average test length is linked with an aircraft utilization, various cyclic melee costs involve expensive items, such as tires, brakes, and wheels. The relationship between the cycle and the hours flow. Qantas 7A79 perform fewer cycles per hours flow on per London. The airport size. There are cost-saving potentials for Qantas non-stop service because the usage of two airports, rather than three, is one of the few cost-saving potential. However, the cost can be spread per movement across a much higher number of potential on the A380, for example, Emirates or Singapore Airlines. The NU SARS can be considered as another cost-saving potential for operating a diverse route because the Enghu SARS or Qantas are 5,000 British pounds lower than for the two Emirates legs via Dubai 
and three thousand two hundred pounds. Now, what I'm going to Singapore Airlines likes by Singapore. The end who such potentials are influenced by the size of the aircraft at the end of the day. At one point, the SARS potentials are 18% higher than Emirates and 5% higher than Singapore Airlines, when the growth is spread across the potentials again. Congesting potential, an increase in share of congesting potentials and the establishment of new co-sharing and interlining equipment at the end of the day lead to higher operational complexity and inflexibility Two higher cost at the end of the day is about 0.06 US cents per available seat mile. The yield, the fair structure, the traffic mix, and the length of the hall, intensity and co of competition and the network design are the factors influencing the yield of the hall. To a large extent, quantas yield above the average in this case. On the Daimai's route is the reflection of the interaction between product design and the pricing activities on the UK Australian market I have shown to you before. Now we come to the last part. In order to verify the results from the revenue cost model, I have also conducted the sensitivity analysis and the mix analysis. Uh, if in two scenarios, Quantas could be still profitable, for example, if the full price go up, what happened to the profitability of uh, autonomous coal price? The first scenario is, is assume a 9.5 percent rise in the set full price from 2.11 US dollar per column to US 2.31 over a period, for example, to an unforeseen event and the extra low factor which is used in the revenue cost model uh, of 82% has been considered. And now you can see uh, before uh, at the full price of 2.11 US dollar per column, uh, Qantas could make uh, 19.43 US dollar per potential, but when the full price increased by 9.5% alone, Quantas will make a loss on the who. The second scenario, which most uh, scenario happening um, in Singapore Airlines, Thai Airways, and other airlines operate ultra long growth flights in 2010-2011, and when the full price was a three US dollar per column, uh, which means it's a 42.2 percent increase. Alto long coal flies will be profitable at all. Because uh, Singapore Airlines and Thai Airways, uh, they had the low factor of 78%, but the high full price led to the suspension of the alto long coal flies, for example, Singapore, New York, or Los Angeles, and Bangkok, New York, Los Angeles by Thai Airways. What mean? the oil price volatility and higher set full price, leading to higher full cost and possible loss from full hashing. Economic recession and currency volatility, for example, exchange rate fluctuation, which means you have the decline in premium demand and the yield, or people are downgrade themselves to lower capping class, for example, to save the expense for the company. The ongoing conflict in the Middle East, which is happening now. Um, the establishment of no-fly zones, for example, over Iran in Iran, uh, leading to operational disruption. Quantas non-stop service will be to be divest to go over Afghanistan instead, which is adding about 40, 50 minutes to the total travel time. But they have to bound uh, up to 90 economic class potentials from the 236C Boeing aircraft in order to reduce weight and enable to, say, to travel the longer route. That is very amazing if you see uh, the only uh, about 40 and 50 minutes uh, of the total travel time, but you are losing 90 potentials. The alternative option is uh, to make the full stop in Singapore 
for the outbound flight from Perl to Langhu, because the flight from Langhu to Perl is not a flexible test. And you can see uh, the whole assessment quantum has done in the past two days because of the ongoing crisis in Iran. They are flying over Afghanistan and the, uh, Ukraine and Russia. The operational inflexibility is also among of the mix uh, other long call operators are facing. For example, the payload means limitation. If you are looking on Singapore Airlines on Singapore and New York, they have a limitation of the configuration because of the nature of the distance. They are not able to fill more seats in, and they are not able to fill an uh, economy class coming in. If you are looking at El Al, on Tel Aviv, Melbourne. They are planning to do some test flights in March, April, and May. They have the limitation on the routing because a lot of Arabic countries are not allowed LL allow to fly over their own country and airspace. And the strict regulation implemented by the Civil Aviation Safety Authorities, for example, the working hours for the crew, is also very strict and it leads to the operational inflexibility of that service. The rise of neo protesting in aeropolitics, national disasters, has to be considered as one of the mix as well. If you are looking at the bushfire in Australia, a lot of people from Sydney they have cancelled their itinerary to fly via Perth to London because they have to stay in Australia to take care of their relatives or help out. The market entry of the new competition on the route, for example, Dimes or via the hub, and the more of, of new premium products, for example, Qatar Airways with the Q-suit in business class. The increasing security Malay costs in the post 9 11 area is also a mix for the ultra long call. Because if you are looking at the flag carrier LL, they are spending up to 110 million US dollars a year to conform with the airline security measure required by Israel Shingbeck Security Service, which means it is about 10 times more per potential than in the US. It leads to the struggle to be profitable in the airline business in Shanghai, and it has to be considered as one of the trees to the commercial benefit and economic visibility of the future route Tel Aviv to Melbourne. The increase in labor costs in many parts of the world Higher and ten quantas main competitors on the Kangaroo route, the strong bargaining power of labor union and pilot association has to be considered as well. The increasing airport and cruise SARS is also among of the main risks for quantas, for example. The airport SARS at Perth may be increased by 38% over the next five years. Because in Australia, you do not have the other option. You have to fly. Because if you want to drive from Perth to Sydney, you are spending weeks. There is no train service between. You don't have the intermodal transportation option. That's why the airports in Australia have the monopolistic uh, position to increase the fare and the airline suffer. The Australian airspace, the Haiga and Hussars, take in other airspace between London and Perth. Now we are coming to the end, the conclusion. We have the new generation of ultra long call operators. The missile from the revenue cost model spreads some confidence that airlines like Qantas can have the much better sense of achieving profitability on ultra long call flights in the era of claim sharing economies. The cost advantages are very slight compared to the one stop service, but they are more likely to making up for the market positioning in the premium market. The additional contributing factors from the macroeconomic perspective are following the price in global demand for air travel, the chef full price development, and the economic growth and the globalization and the development of the premium economic class product, and the auxiliary products are also contributing factors. At last hub airports, the cost to accommodate a Boeing 7879 aircraft is very high compared to secondary hubs. 
back the airline is my on the hub and spoke system, especially at the port and which is offer a advantage in terms of cost saving and demand stimulation with respect to the economies of scale, scope and density. Despite the deployment of full efficient aircraft nowadays, the results from the CTV analysis deliver the key message that ultra long growth flights are particularly sensitive to set full price fluctuation. Therefore, a serious threat to the availability of ultra long growth service is the climate of the high full price volatility driven by the current <coughs> geopolitical crisis in the Middle East. Apart from applying new full saving strategies in the digital era, for example, the flight planning system, the adoption of full and currency hashing policies, the prestige of a careful aircraft MT make management, and the optimization of airport and staff melee costs uh, are necessary for increasing the strength of achieving profitability on the ultra long cool hoods in general. The less price sensitive customer segments can pass on the higher cost of a high full form concerning premium ticket with higher yield. Now, our initial years will make it difficult to sustain the ultra long call operation from the commercial point of view. In conclusion, because of the limited realistic opportunities at the moment, ultra long call flights will remain a niche. For example, Southeast Asia, Indian subcontinent, or Australia, New Zealand to US, Canada, or Perth to Europe, for example, London, Paris, Frankfurt, and Manchester, or Turkish Airlines, Istanbul, Sydney, Melbourne. Thank you for your attention and I think we've got, we got time for uh, a few questions. So, um, do, we have so do we have the microphones? So. <coughs> also, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. To me from the lips, that's why I'm coming closer. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, but you can you put a bit lower? Because oh, I yeah, 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 yeah. from the lips. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, I quickly assess that. Fuel was obviously the biggest sensitivity, apart from the Middle East yes. conflict. At what point do the airline executives say, well, we're making losses. How long can we sustain these losses when we'll have to say, look, call it a day, finish with a, the with a route? Is there a, an envisaged figure? That, uh, I mean, you, you saw what, when the fuel went up 42%. The losses were enormous, obviously. Yeah. Um, but is there a, a cut-off point when the fuel goes up and other problems happen where it become, doesn't become a, a viable a proposition in, anymore? Do you actually have a figure or a, an amount in your, in, in your mind when this actually, you actually arrive at this point? Unfortunately not, uh, because uh, it is heavily influenced by the test link of the hood and the fly. Yeah. And uh, that is uh, very impossible to figure out uh, what you have asked, because uh, I only had a certain limitation of the data available to, uh, from the operational side, there are more opportunities to measure than my uh, question you have asked, because my intention was to look from the commercial point of view if ultra long coal flies can be commercial viable, and I have considered the operational mix for the commercial viability as well. But uh, the op operational specific question that is something I can unfortunately oh, sure, not answer. Shame. But it seems quite a sensitive route to, very to, narrow, yeah. to, to yes. fuel and other, and other factors. Yes, uh, the very and and I, I could see an airline saying, we can't, we can't sustain this anymore because we're making too many losses. Yes. Because of something that would happen. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Good evening. <coughs> Michael Karavik, am I alive? Yep. Um, I used to be with Qantas quite a few years ago. I'm also part of that UK, UK contingent that has a family in Perth, so I know the route quite well. One observation is that the 
flight that comes in from Melbourne actually operates to the domestic terminal in Perth, the importance being that the international terminal is 11 kilometers away by uh, road, so that's quite a key transfer time. If you link, think about that, and also the fact that so much of that traffic actually comes from Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane, if Qantas proceed with a Sydney-London non-stop flight, do you see this service surviving? That is a good question. Um, it will be very difficult to estimate because, the, as you mentioned, with the domestic terminal operation, that is also a unique selling point for Qantas. To tell the people you can transfer the domestic terminal uh, for flying to London. Uh, but uh, the usage of a domestic terminal is not for long term because the airport in Perth asks commanders to move from the domestic terminal to the international one. Uh, but commanders is not happy about this because commanders say the main unique selling point is to provide the customer smooth transfer in Perth including the usage of the nose, because I have to build up the very specific transit nose only for the customer's flight from Perth to London. Uh, so if they are forced to move to the other terminal in Perth, they could have the impact on the transfer because the people can ask themselves to fly via Singapore on the A380 because Qantas has now a new premium product on the A380. Uh, so it could be the competition to the per service and it could be maybe the end of the service in the future. Uh, my name is Hugh Dibley. I'm a member of the Royal Air Nautical Society, chairman of the Toulouse branch and been with BOAC British Airways flying a long time to Australia. But my main question is, you say it reduces carbon, the CO2. Can't really, can you explain how this is justified? Because, of course, we all accept that the long, ultra long haul flights do burn much more fuel. Because can you explained you, you carry. Again because, uh, you, you explained, of course, that you burn a lot more fuel because you're carrying fuel for the second part of the flight for the first part. But you also said that the ultra long haul flights, you produce less carbon dioxide. I couldn't yes, quite uh, see that. Because, uh, because of the stage length, the cost or the emission are spilled over the stage length of the operation. And if you are looking at the website of Skyscanner, if you are looking at the website of CO2 Climate Com, uh, they always favor the direct flight from Perth to London as environment friendly route because the cost and the environmental impact is very high per potential. However, if you are consider the stage length, the environmental impact is spilled over the stage length. I think it's why the Perth London flight is considered as the most environmental friendly option for people looking for flying from London to Perth. Yeah, I'd need further the discussions on that. I still I would have thought you're burning so much extra fuel on the first part that you're obviously generating much more CO2, but I'll talk about it later. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I have another question on the same topic, I'm afraid. Um, so uh, the, um, the, the comparison that I've seen uh, Qantas come out with, and I think you're using the same, uh, uh, same wording, is comparing this flight with two A380 flights, uh, as opposed to comparing like with like. Uh, so so um, when the head of Qantas was in um, Hamilton Place a couple of years ago, he, I asked him, uh, can you compare like with like, and he just wasn't prepared to answer the question. That is uh, true if you consider the A380, if you see uh, how many potential the A380 can take me, of course the environmental impact is showing the other picture again. But if you are looking at the full efficiency of the Boeing 7879 aircraft, with the reduction of the full impact, like about up to 20%, it's counterbalance the disadvantage again. And if you uh, pay the higher price for the premium car, you can offset the carbon again at the end of the day. Because with the A380, you have the last share of economic class potential. And, uh, 
the ultra long cold fly from Perth to London at a very high premium share of uh, business and premium economy class potential. And uh, if you are looking at the numbers from the past few months, uh, the carbon offset shame customer have pay is very high content. But uh, the comparison with the environmental impact, the guest among of the topic, uh, a potential topic for the research as well, because uh, I didn't consider the whole environment issue about uh, the most of the key binding I have found uh, from the commercial point of view, uh, from the perception of the potential as well. Hello? Hello? Oh, I think it's live. Thank you. Thank you for the nods. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for this lecture. Uh, it was really inspiring and informative in regards to students and professionals alike uh, uh, for the viability of ultra long haul flights. Uh, I guess I'd state my profession. I'm a student, so not very flamboyant. Uh, but uh, my question was that when you talk about the increase of fuel prices in your risk analysis, um, in the future we're seeing new innovative techniques uh, come into play in the aviation industry. So, for example, Airbus have a new uh, project called uh, Fellow Fly, uh, where two aircraft fly on a long haul route, uh, one uh, below the other, uh, and by using the wake force, from the aircraft from below, it reduces the uh, fuel consumption of the aircraft above. So by using these techniques and also uh, sustainable fuel alternatives, like uh, I was talking to, uh, the, the CEO of Gatwick came to our university and he was speaking with Shell about sustainable fuels, uh, the redu reducing costs in regards to that and the airline's willingness to use sustainable uh, fuel alternatives. Uh, using these techniques, do you see them coming into play for ultra long haul flights? Because it seems like there's an economic potential in regards to premium uh, passengers, but to reduce these uh, pestle effects uh, on airlines, do you think they'll be using these innovative techniques within the decade? Yeah. Sorry that for is, the waffling. <laughs> that is very interesting uh, from the technical point of view as well, from, in terms of fuel. Uh, of course, uh, there are also options to cope with higher fuel price uh, in the times of new aircraft or in times of uh, premium use, where the people can offset a higher fuel price. But it also depends very heavily uh, in which market environment you are operating. If you are looking, for example, at the Indian US market, there will be another story compared to Perth and London because the customer is more price than the team compared to the Australians or the British people, like between Australia and the UK. Uh, so it's very largely depending on the market environment the airlines operating, depending on the customers, the willingness to pay, and the amount and share of business travelers, because they can offset the full price by the expense. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hello. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, can you maybe come here because it's too far for me to move from the lips. Thank you. No, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hello, uh, Daniel Pollard, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, I'm just wondering, does your analysis um, ever consider the possibly unlikely introduction of uh, supersonic flight or even suborbital space flights point to point as a means of competition, which could potentially not help here. Sorry, okay. Uh, does your analysis look into the other event, events of suborbital space flights point to point as a means of competition or even the reintroduction of supersonic flights that would dramatically reduce flight time from London to Perth, say? Uh, I couldn't follow you, sorry. Uh, can we uh, do it month to month later? Because yeah, I'm sure. not able to. Okay, cool. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. 
Thanks, Matt. Totally different question. Have you done any research talking to passengers who've actually traveled on the service and given a customer perspective, especially those who traveled in economy? Yes, uh, good question. Um, I have told to economy class potential on the fly because I was on track fly by myself as well two times from Perth to London and back. And uh, I have been tasked with them and the potential protection in economy class is somehow different from business and premium economy because you can fully understand you have limited space. But however, uh, the space in economy class is much larger and wider than other airlines because of the specifically design economy class for ultra long haul flights. And the economy class potential, they are very positive about the service because uh, because of the overall environment, the overall product quantas has invest into, and because of the full service and the cyclic reduction program, because Quantas are cooperating with the University of Sydney, Charles Perkins Centre, in order to reduce the cyclic effect and the uncomfortable feeling on ultra long haul flights, specifically for economy class potential. So they have assessed the meal service, they have assessed the flexible program to stretch their arm and legs in the economy class uh, allows back on the plane. And all the programs and the initiative by Quantas is leave uh, to the high customer certification on the route per London. Just one last quick question. As nobody's mentioned it, I expected them to, to do so. Um, it recently it's been announced that Qantas are going to go for the Airbus A350 long range, possibly for the Sydney-London uh, route. Is there a great difference in using uh, different equipment, the 7879 compared to, to the A350 LR? I know the A350 is slightly wider inside the fuselage, the seats are slightly bigger. And I've also met some, I also know somebody who's done the Perth-London route in economy, and he's quite an elderly gentleman and quite large, but he loved it. He really liked it. So maybe there's still quite a bit of potential there. Yeah, it's true. Yes, uh, the A350 uh, plays a very crucial, important role in Commander Second Moment, and they are more in favour because the 787 was just the solution for the short and medium term to operate the per language service or to operate the service from the east coast of Australia to LA or San Francisco or Santiago de Chile. Uh, but in the longer future, uh, they will go for the 350 uh, to offer the ultra long haul flights because they have the very large payload range. They can take more potentials. And even on per London, uh, the 850 will be a more suitable aircraft because of the high demand on the route. Yes. I would imagine they wouldn't have to offload the passengers on a 350 as they would on a 7879. Okay, 350, you move it. They would have to take the passengers off the 350. Sorry, I don't think they'd have to take the passengers off the 350. No. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And, um, in there, and uh, I think I need a cold towel around my head to absorb some of the more detail of that. But I think the, the sort of message I take away is, you know, these are, we're, they're unlikely to be widespread in the near term because there's some real uh, issues that need to be ironed out. And the, the question seems to boil down to me that can you attract enough high yield passengers to overcome that inherent fuel cost disadvantage? And until you can sort that out, you're, these are not going to be widespread. So you're probably restricted some very limited high yield origin destination city pairs, a bit like Concord was in its first days, and uh, or the next generation of even lower uh, fuel burn aircraft. So uh, unfortunately, we're probably not going to see direct flights to New Zealand anytime soon, are we, on that, on that basis. So I'll have to suffer. <laughs> but uh, please, uh, yeah, please join me in thanking uh, Linus for that. Thank you. From across the globe, from the center of aerospace, and now to you. 
thank you for downloading from the Royal Aeronautical Society. If you enjoyed this content, please consider showing your support for the Society. Share a link to this presentation by email or on your favorite social networks. If you have an interest in aerospace, consider the professional and personal benefits of membership. Visit www.aerosociety.com.